This is a segment we call Discover India and the idea is pretty simple. About once every month, we head out on a driving holiday and our destination is usually about a day's drive from one of the four major metros. Today, I'm heading south from Chennai once again to the small seaside village of Tarangambadi or Tranquabar. And as you'll discover, it holds a pretty special place in India's history. It's an easy day's drive from Chennai to Tranquabar, a distance of about 300 kilometers down the East Coast Road. Make a leisurely start out of Chennai in the morning and you'll arrive at the outskirts of Pondicherry just in time for an early lunch. We stopped for a taste of the excellent wood-fired pizzas at Tanto's. Back on the road, it was time to unleash the brio and make up some time. But when you're driving on these particular roads in Tamil Nadu, it's especially important to stay extra alert. Now, the last time I headed out on one of these drives from Chennai, I was driving to Chettinad and that drive stayed pretty much on the major national and state highways. That meant it was well surfaced and crucially a dual carriageway with a divider down the middle so you didn't really have to worry too much about oncoming traffic. My drive today to Tranquabar though is a little bit different. It's based almost entirely around the picturesque East Coast Road that runs all the way south from Chennai to Tutikorin. And the interesting thing about the East Coast Road is obviously the fact that it's just two lanes pretty much all the way through. So you have to be alert at all times for oncoming traffic. And also remember that here in South India, they tend to overtake around blind curves. And chances are, when you go around one of those, you will find some oncoming traffic heading straight at you in your lane. Once past the Pondicherry Bypass, it's a simple drive down the East Coast Road, past Kadalur, towards Nagapattinam. Now, because I've had to take a little bit of extra care on the road and the fact that it's been raining intermittently on and off and heavily overcast, my average speeds, my real average speeds have been about 80 to 100 kilometers an hour. And as a result though, the real-time fuel average indicator has been showing me some pretty interesting numbers. 13 to 15 kilometers per liter. And that's pretty good for a petrol car. As you get close to Tarangambadi though, it's a safe option to look up directions on a GPS or your smartphone as things can get a bit confusing. Enter Tranquobar through the old archway and it is like driving into another world. The village, almost flattened by the tsunami of 2004, has been completely rebuilt just the way it was, with all of its rural seaside charm intact. Tranquaba or Tarangambadi as it's now known is an easy day trip from Chennai and there are a couple of very good reasons why you should come here. The first obviously is the spectacular 17th century Danish fort. That's right, I said Danish, not Dutch, not French, not Portuguese. And the second is just this area's proximity to the ocean. We're staying at the bungalow on the beach hotel. That is literally a bungalow on the beach. We're about 50 feet away from the crashing surf. You can almost hear it, I'm sure, in my audio. And on either side of us here, on this beachhead in Tranquoba, are stretches of some of the best and most cleanest beaches you'll see in Tamil Nadu. Move past the outer ring of traditional Tamil houses and the European influence is unmistakable. Walk past the Church of Zion and the monument to the first Protestant missionary to enter India and your eyes are immediately drawn to the remains of Fort Dansburg. Open for tourists from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., the fort also houses a museum containing relics of ships, documents and excellent examples of pottery and ironwork. Once you've had your cultural fill though, it's best to head home to the pier and take in the sun, sand and surf, recharging yourself for the drive home. 